A piece of zinc may be distinguished from a piece of magnesium by, well, starting with one, which conducts electricity. Well, no, they're both metals, so they're both going to conduct electricity. So we're not going to be able to use that to distinguish them, to tell them apart. How about two? Determining which releases H2 gas from a one molar HCl solution. So again, both of them will do this. The reaction, this is on the factoid sheet. When you react in metal with strong acid HCl, you're going to produce the metal ion plus uh, your H2 gas will be evolved. And so this happens if it's zinc or if it's magnesium, so that's not going to tell them apart. But their densities will be different, different metals, different densities. That you know just is a basic fact about different metals, different substances in general. So if you measure their densities, you should be able to tell them apart. And so three works, and so the only choice would be E. Two one-liter flasks contain hydrogen, oxygen at the same T and P. What do they have the same average? Well, if they've got the same temperature, pressure, and volume, right, because they're two one-liter flasks, Based on PV equals NRT, we know that their moles are the same. Because PV equals NRT, that's got to be consistent if the PV and T is constant between both of them or the same for both of these samples of gas. We know the N's got to be the same. We also know, looking at one, that the kinetic energy, the, the average kinetic energy would have to be the same because that's what temperature does. As temperature increases, it increases average kinetic energy. And you can broadly define the average kinetic energy of any gas, no matter if it's a hydrogen or oxygen or argon or whatever, by that temperature. So given that they have the same temperature, they by definition have the same kinetic energy. So that's true. Same mass? No. We know they've got the same mole. So let's say it's, I don't know exactly what it is. Let's say it's one mole of each. We know they've got different molar masses. So if you've got one mole of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen, one is two grams, one is 32 grams, they definitely don't have the same mass. They also don't have the same speed. The speed, the average speed of the molecules of gases is proportional to temperature. It does tend to go up as temperature increases. But unlike kinetic energy, it's not defined by it. They're not equivalent. So you can't say, oh, two gases have the uh, same kinetic, uh, same temperature, therefore the same speed. And this actually comes back to the fact of the kinetic energy and the mass, because the formula for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So if you know, in this case, your gases have the same Ke, we already talked about that for number one, but their masses are different, we talked about that for number two, the only way, if you think about this, whoops, you think about this mathematically, the only way that the Ke will be the same while their masses will be different is if the velocities, the speeds are also different, right? Because otherwise, you know, if their velocities were the same and their masses were different, then their kinetic energies would have to be different just based on a mathematical calculation. So that means their velocities will also have to be different and therefore speed is out. And so only one works. So we can put choice D for 31. Okay, next one. Molecules that involve both S and P orbital electrons and their bonding include which of the following? Well, let's take a look at these. We know NH3, each H is 1S1. Each N is going to be 1S2, 2S2, 2P3. So when these bond, H's S orbitals and N's P orbitals, which are both unfilled, are going to get involved in that bonding. So yes, one does include both S and P orbital bonding. CCl4, well, in C, we've got, uh, technically for C, the configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. But you have to remember carbon undergoes sp3 hybridization or sp mixing. So even though you might look at this and say, oh, shouldn't it be just p bonding, just like it was for n? Uh, actually, no, it would be, and I think actually N is the same way, now that I think about it. Um, N would also have a little bit of SP mixing, I think, yeah. But in any event, the point is, carbon definitely shows this hybridization. So the S is involved. These orbitals basically mix together and both participate in the bonding. So right away, we're done. We know it's both S's and P's. If you look at CL, CL is going to have an open P electron or an unpaired P electron. So therefore, the bonding for chlorine is going to be in the P as well. So two would also be one that has S and P. And H and Cl then the same thing, right? H has got an open or an unpaired S electron. Cl has got an unpaired Cl electron. So we know 
or unpaired p electron so we know that these two are going to have sp orbitals involved in the bonding so all three of these should be right so the answer to 32 will be a and now 33 which one functions as a bronsted acid and a bronsted base well if it's a bronsted acid it's got to be able to donate a proton or an h plus it's got to be able to give one up but if it's a bronsted base it's got to be able to accept one so the problem with one is yes it can get rid of that h but it can't really accept an h plus to become h2 clo4 plus that's just not something that happens you don't really gain you don't really have acids become positively charged that's strange so you can get rid of one but both two and three can either lose that h or gain one and if hco3 minus gains one it becomes h2co3 if hpo4 gains one it becomes h2po4 minus and that's all legit either either one of those is fine so it can lose that h or it can gain that h so both two and three work and so we can eliminate we can pick as our answer here choice a